everybody today we're going to be doing the complete testing and troubleshooting of the ignition system of a star 1100 motorcycle before you go out and spend lots of money for a mechanic to test and diagnose something or replace something see if you could do it yourself save yourself lots of money and time let's get started already have a movie that I put together that goes into great detail with the removing of the gas tank to reach the areas that we're going to need to do this job so if you want to take a look at that movie first, click the link up in the top right corner. We'll take you to it. I'm not going to be removing the carbs as we do in that movie, but after that we can continue. I have a pod kit. You may in fact have the original air box, but either way, the two coils for the ignition are housed under the plastic trim for the carburetors. Here are the carbs. The plastic trim is right in front. Mine is chrome right here. We're going to have to remove it. And we're going to start removing this trim by pulling off this rubber tank mount, just like that. I'm pulling off this front bolt with 5 millimeter hex. This might be aftermarket bolt, so you may have a different size bolt on your motorcycle. This is followed by the tank mount on the other side of the bike, and then the front bolt on the other side. After unsnapping the cover from the top, we're going to negotiate this one out carefully from the clutch cable, and then simply slide off the remaining cover from the other side. One tool you should have in your collection is this spark testing tool with an adjustable gap right here. It only costs a couple dollars. It can be found at your local auto parts store. Be sure to pick one up. First order of business with electrical troubleshooting like this is going to be the testing of the battery. If you've got a weak battery, there's just no sense. We need to ensure proper voltages as step one. Testing the battery now, I'm testing through the charging cable. Assuming the fuse through the charging cable is good, you can see I have an inline fuse, red one off to the left. And I'm assuming also that you have a simple cheap multimeter, which you could get at Harbor Freight for a few dollars. Don't get one that's too cheap. Spend at least 30 bucks on a multimeter. But I'm going to test. You can see the black one is obviously the unshielded, the red positive being shielded. Take a look at the connection here. I'm seeing 13.3 volts. This is more than enough. I've let the charged overnight top off the battery. And of course, if you don't have a charger cable, you come right off the terminals. Red positive, black negative. And this will get you the same effect. Generally though, if the battery has enough juice to crank over the engine and start the bike, it's got enough juice to run the ignition. Folks that asked about this, I'm going to cover this right quick. You turn on the key and you can see stuff is working, lights turn on, you can beep the horn. Your main fuse is good. But if this is completely dead, we're going to have to take a look at the main fuse specifically. We're going to do that now. And I pulled these two plastic clips from the cover from under the seat. We see that come from here and over here. And with those removed, this whole thing lifts up, including that flap in the back, right out of the way. We see two 30 amp fuses. This one is a spare. This one is the live one. Remove the dust cap from it. Now pull the fuse. And we'll test it. We'll move over to diode or audible to make this test. Hook up our connections. And we hear a beep. We know this one is good. Confirmed it's good. We're going to place it right back in. And then we'll drop on our dust cap. Then we'll dress this cover right back into position because we have no more business being down here. So we set it down. Line up both holes. Move this cable connection for the tank back out of the way here. Reset our fasteners by pushing the center back out like shown. Now we're going to take a look at all the other fuses by pulling off this dust cap right here. Looking under the dust cap, we could see a key that tells us the location of the fuses. And we can see that ignition is over here. It's a 10 amp fuse. This one right here, red. We're going to pull that fuse. The same check done again determines continuity. This one shows it to be good. So we're going to put the fuse right back in. This is a wonderful time to inspect all the fuses in the fuse box, not just this one. So take the time to check all of them. With this fuse being good, you may want to ask yourself, going back up to the front of the bike, if you turn this key and you see the headlight turn on, you see everything else seem normal, and you turn on this switch, can you hear the horn? And most importantly, when you hit the starter, does the starter bump? If the bike is in neutral and the starter doesn't bump, this switch may be no good or this may be no good. An entirely different issue affecting the ignition system. So check those out before you continue. For the purpose of this video, all tests are going to be done on the rear cylinder. 
That's going to be the high side coil shown here by the key. The rear cylinder as it stands has a spark plug on the high side as well. This is simply done because making a video it's a lot easier to get a camera on the side. All tests should be repeated on the front cylinder. With that we're going to remove all connections to this coil. So we're going to pop off the chrome trim above the spark plugs. Then we're going to gently remove the spark plug cable. We'll note our positions of the two wires before disconnecting. Red is closer to me, orange is facing the inside of the bike. I'm going to remove these wires now, first with red and then followed by orange. We'll be setting our meter to ohms auto. At this low resistance, it's important to get a measurement of the cable first. As I sit here and hold it on the cable, I can see that it's 3.9 ohms through these cables, which isn't terribly good, but at least we know that. And now we're going to take a reading across the primary winding. And we could see, give it a second, 7.8 ohms. So we're going to have to subtract our resistance. And we end up with 3.9 ohms. That's supposed to sit between 3.57 and 4.83. So that winding is good. Now we're going to check the resistance of the secondary winding. One connection going into the spark plug cable just off to the left here. The other one off the lead of the coil. And as we look here, we see 22,000 ohms. We have to keep in mind that there is a 10K resistor that's on the end of the spark plug wire that we're not going to be disconnecting if we don't need to. It could be destructive. So we're going to subtract 10K from this reading. We're going to end up with 12.8. That sits between 10.7 and 14.5. So that's just fine. We're going to be checking the stator pickup coil found at its connector here under this cover. This is M5. There's several connections under here. You'll notice that one of my main connectors on the harness is now gone. I got a real nice video of a fire that happened here. That's beyond the scope of this video. But we do have our connector. We could see here that it's the off-white one. These colors are shown here in the black-blue gray wiring. I'm going to measure my probes first. I've cleaned the terminals. They should be better than last time. We're seeing 1.6 ohms, 1.3 ohms, even better. We'll take that into account. Now we're just going to measure this connector here, going back towards under that cover, and we're seeing 213.2, so we're seeing 212 is our value, and 212 sits right between 189 and 231 perfectly, so we're going to say that's good. We're going to put this connector right back on. If this read open or out of parameters, this would require a replacement of part that would be beyond the scope of this video, but at least you've identified the problem. For our next test, we're going to make sure that we put back the wires we had taken off the coil from previous tests. On this outer wire, we're going to leave just a little bit of the insulation exposed for our test probe, like this. Make sure our run switch is set to on, and just place the key in the ignition. Don't turn it. Set up our multimeter onto DC volts. Put the negative side of the meter onto a suitable ground, right here by the coil for the mounting of the screw is just fine. And the positive will go here on this red cable. You can see the ignition is currently off, obviously, and there is no voltage right now on the meter displayed. But as I turn the key on, take a look again, and we see we're getting voltage. So everything going through here, the keys, the switches, the safeties, everything in between, we're getting voltage to the coil. So we've tested through everything. Check this on both coils, of course, make sure that everything is fine. Next thing we could do is a spark test. If you have a spark tester like mine, you'll need to remove the top fitting for this type of uh, connector. So it's threaded and that goes on. I've set my gap for six millimeter. It's what the manual calls out for, but I don't think it really applies in this test. It's just a number I had because you're not measuring the spark under the pressure of the combustion chamber, which is different for spark performance for the ignition. But it's better than not having a value to measure a gap against. So we're going to go with it. Got the other end grounded, we're all ready. That was a nice blue spark at that gap, that's a good sign. The only thing left at this point is a spark plug itself. We're gonna remove it, but before we open up the combustor chamber, we're gonna blow out all the crap in here so we don't get anything in there. I'm gonna use a 1316 spark plug removal socket. I'm gonna only use the ratchet to the extent that I need to loosen it. So I'm going to give it a couple of turns, loosening it, and then I like to loosen the remainder by hand. 
checking the plugs for damage, fouling, uneven wear, make sure the corners are sharp, and of course we're going to check the gap of the plugs as well. Should be 28 to 31, mine sit at 30 so this is just fine. Put the spark plug back in the spark plug socket, screw it in by hand so I don't cross thread it. It'll only be snugged with the ratchet. I find sometimes I need pliers to pull the socket out. Secure the cable back onto the spark plug. Make sure it's dressed the same way that it came off so it doesn't impinge. And drop the chrome cover back on after you've cleaned it. Still no spark. Let's continue. We're going to go back to the back cover just below the seat again. Pop up those tabs. I'm going to lift it just enough to expose this diode taped into the harness right over here. And I'm going to carefully score the tape on the connector side so I can get it started. Unravel just a little bit of this tape so that we could remove the diode from the connector. The test will be done on the diode itself. I'm going to turn on meter to diode test. And when we connect it in one direction, we should show an open. And we see here an open. And now we're going to reverse the polarity of the meter. And in this direction, we have an audible beep. And we see that it's closed. This diode is good. We pull back the tape and put the diode back in going to retape everything now starting from above the diode at the harness down past the diode to ensure that everything stays secure so we'll dress everything back in now seat the cover back down and put the fasteners back on move to the final test we're going to be checking the diode and start circuit cutoff relay the one I'm wiggling it's got a metal fastener with tabs with a rubber mount, which just could be exerting force downward, wiggling back and forth to remove it from that mount. It's very easy to do. Just like that. Remove it from the fastener. As shown, we can see the pins. I'm going to turn the meter again to diode, holding the module with the rubber mount pointed up. We're looking at the bottom row of pins, pin 2 and 3 from the right. So we're taking a measurement, and we could see that as we test it in one direction, we have no indication from the meter, as we would expect. So now we're going to reverse polarity, and we're going to recheck pins 2 and 3 from the right on the bottom row. And we see an indication on the meter telling us that the diode is good. So we're going to reinstall the module back into the bike. Ensure that the module is facing the right direction snap it back in for positive snap lower it down over that metal fastener and slide it back up till it clears the bottom and then slide it back down till it meets that bottom point at this point if you still haven't found the ignition problem find a friend or a shop who could swap the igniter because there's nothing left we're going to put this front cover back on now it connects like this when it's on the bike we're going to Negotiate in the clutch side first under the clutch cable. Move the cables out of the way. Rotate the bars. We're going to lift both sides up a little first so that that top snaps in as I showed before. And then we're going to lower this down over where the ignition key goes in. Lock that down nice. There it is. Then we're going to hand tighten in those M5 screws on both sides. And once those are tightened in, we're going to torque them down snug. Finally, we'll place the rubber tank mounts back on both sides. Just give them a twist, and that's it. Putting the tank on is reverse of removal of the tank and the seat and all of the other associated parts. I have a movie that shows this. I have a link on the top right that you could click on. It'll take you to it if you want to see how that's done. Also shows the cable catching fire if you want to see that as well. So that's it. That's the uh, complete troubleshooting of the ignition system for the V-Star 1100. I hope you uh, found this video helpful towards the troubleshooting of your bike, leading towards the repair without spending too much money. Click that like and subscribe button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?